The New Jersey Bank Marketing Association presents the May 2011 Bank Marketing Seminar held at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Clark, New Jersey. I'm your host, Steve Lubetkin. In this episode, Michelle Clay, Regional Sales and Marketing Director for Wells Fargo Bank. Introducing Michelle Clay is Damian Kane of Northfield Bank. All right, welcome back, everybody. Thank you. Our third speaker this morning is Michelle Clay. Michelle is the Regional Sales and Marketing Director for Wells Fargo Northeast. She currently directs the sales and marketing effort, efforts for Wells Fargo in the areas of New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. We are very pleased to have Michelle with us today, and I will turn it over. Thank you. Good. Okay. It's very nice to be able to spend some time with you this morning. My job is to take you from green to red and yellow and put you on the stage, Coach. Let's see if I do a good job at that. Um, this is my uh, 37th year with uh, the new Wells Fargo. Um, I started back in the first national state days. Um, and this is my fourth brand introduction in this market. So think back at First Fidelity. Some of you might remember that. Think back to First Union. Some of you might remember that. Think back to Wachovia. Some of you remember that. And I'm pleased to say, after 37 years, I have really saved the best for last. So I'm pleased about that. Um, introducing the Wells Fargo brand in the Northeast, and really across the East Coast, because you can see in that uh, faded uh, map that we have uh, a number of offices across the East Coast. Um, branches, st we call them stores, uh, almost 3,000, so over 2,800. Um, and really, the, um, the introduction of the Wells Fargo brand on the East Coast um, has a, a different meaning because Wells Fargo is known as a West Coast bank. Um, and really, when you think of Wells Fargo, you might think of the mortgage company, well known across the board, across the entire country. You might think of some corporate um, uh, relationships based on Wells Fargo, but you don't think of it as traditional banking on the East Coast. So the introduction of the Wells Fargo brand on the East Coast has a lot of unique challenges and opportunities. And, and we really took a great deal of time to look at what we were, what we were going to do from a conversion standpoint, uh, as well as from an introduction of a brand standpoint. And Allegra talked a little bit about conversion connection to changing of the name. So um, when you th when we start to look at um, the East Coast in general and the conversion activity, it was a very disciplined uh, plan to do conversions. Starting on, on the uh, West Coast in Colorado and then coming down through the East Coast. The Northeast was scheduled for, as you know, February in New Jersey and March in New York and Connecticut. And then it will, the conversion actually will continue on the East Coast and really finish up toward the end of this year. Um, and changing the name and introducing the brand in that kind of a fast-paced environment um, is really a very challenging activity uh, because the name is changing at different times as you convert across the East Coast. Um, the media in this market, Northeast, is a very cluttered media market, so that's an added complexity. Um, we have overlapping markets. Um, we have in southern New Jersey, we bump up into the Philadelphia DMA, um, and the Philadelphia conversion just happened in April. Um, again, so overlapping markets really played into our decision making around how we were going to introduce the brand. And in New Jersey, you know, um, we have not only South Jersey in the Philadelphia DMA, we have North Jersey in the New York DMA. And so New Jersey converted in early February and New York and Connecticut in March. So what we decided to do was take a look at all of those things and then fo had do some focus groups on uh, really what people thought about the Wells Fargo brand. And we actually um, included in those focus groups 
how they felt about the stagecoach. I was talking to uh, someone today about that. Um, stagecoach has different meanings for different folks. And so how vibrant were we going to use this icon of the stagecoach in the introduction of our brand was really a, a very um, deliberate decision. Um, and I will tell you that it ha the, the um, reception to the stagecoach has far outweighed my expectations. And, and in addition, um, far outweighed what we found in the research. The research kind of showed that um, the folks were thinking of the stagecoach as a little bit old-fashioned. Um, at the same time, they really like the stagecoach from a stability, security, strong image. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that as you start to see the stagecoach and how we introduced it in the, in the advertising particularly. Um, we decided to do a soft launch of the brand in New Jersey after the New Jersey conversion because of all of the complexities I talked about and the market overlaps. And then to do a full brand introduction after New York and Connecticut converted in March. Um, we also decided uh, in introducing the brand, we really needed to pay attention of the two um, legacy brands. Uh, the Stagecoach is a very strong uh, brand in Wells Fargo. Wachovia had its own brand, very embedded in service. Uh, Kevin mentioned, you know, let's, the, he, he thought uh, we did a good job with the Wachovia brand. Let's see about the Wells Fargo brand. So we had a very strong brand in Wachovia that we really had built on service and closeness in the community. And we needed to tie that very strongly to the new strength of the Wells Fargo brand with that security stability history that comes with all of that brand. Um, so that was part of very much all the decision making that you're going to see represented in what I'm going to show you. Um, and then I would say the last piece of it um, was we're, we're a national company, um, but we, we, we operate very locally in the markets that we serve. And one of the real strong bedrocks of Wells Fargo is that local decision making. And so uh, John Stump, who's our uh, CEO, has an expression that our job is to out-national the nationals and out-local the locals. And so we needed to make sure that we, we, did, we showed that strength in the local imagery as well as make sure that folks knew that we had a lot to offer as a national company. So we had the strength of all the products and services and the ability to invest in technology and have that come to bear in value to customers, but we were executing that very locally in terms of the people and the decision making that was there. So very much a marriage of those two things. And I would say those things that I just talked about were really the foundation of how the brand was developed. Now, what I thought I'd do today is share with you some of the things that we did from a communication standpoint, um, and then talk about the general market introduction of the brand, uh, some things we did with diverse segments, and talk about some experiential uh, activities that we did as well. So, communications, it was very much a combination of what we wanted to do in representing this brand externally as well as internally. And from an external standpoint, we actually did something that I never did before, but I really love it. Um, and so I'm pleased and proud to share, share it with you today. Um, we, we, we did a what to expect letter. Before we did an actual letter to uh, tell folks, this is, what's this is your account, it's converting from this to that. We, we did something that said to customers, we're, we're converting, we're going to be converting your accounts, um, and it's, a, it's more of a friendly approach to what's going to happen. Be secure, we're not, we're not going to change uh, some things that you have come to expect from us, and we'll be changing other things, and we'll tell you over the next period of time 
what is actually changing. But we actually did something else. We allowed our customers to choose from uh, one from five charities. So in each of the um, mailings, and they were very uh, locally uh, selected. So in southern New Jersey, in northern New Jersey, and then in New York, and then in Connecticut, each of those regions selected five nonprofits. And we allowed our customers to vote. And, and based on their vote, they were uh, ranked at the end, first, second, third, fourth, fifth choice. Um, and we gave donations to those nonprofits from $5,000 to $40,000. Um, so our customers were um, engaged in the start uh, of the conversion activity. And we really wanted them to understand our value statement in terms of our community involvement um, was not going to change. Again, very uh, much a, a part of Legacy Wachovia, very, very, very much a part of Legacy Wells Far Fargo on a go-forward basis. We got huge responses from customers on this. Um, very appreciative of the fact that we were involved with our local communities. We were willing to give some money to nonprofits, and it was going to be kind of a fun way for us to engage everyone. So I would say this was excellent in terms of brand introduction. Um, the second part of this was uh, team members. Um, we call the folks in the company team members. We have um, how many, Kevin, in total around the company? Over, over 280,000 team members. Um, so we call them team members. Um, our team members in Wachovia were the, 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 I'll say that the folks from Legacy Wells Fargo would always be asking this question. How do the folks feel? Because this happened over a two-year period from when we actually did the acquisition and merger and now when we're actually doing conversion and introduction of the brand. So how are the people feeling? Are they comfortable? Are they going to feel sad about the loss of the Wachovia brand? Um, and I'm here to tell you that our folks were waiting, 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 couldn't wait to change to the brand. Because they had already gotten used to Wells Fargo. And they were anxious for that change. So on when we, we did change signs over the weekend. Uh, we did uh, about 3,500 uh, sign changes in all those stores over that the, the weekends of the New Jersey and the New York and Connecticut conversion. And our folks, they were all in red shirts. Um, we had a reception tables in all the stores for customers coming in for that whole first week. Um, but I went to the stores on that Saturday. Our folks were ready and, and thrilled to be able to welcome customers as part of Wells Fargo. So the, the team member engagement I think Kevin's right on about all of that, is very important to us, something that I, I'll tell you I pay attention to in a big way as responsible for sales and marketing. So what we did was we had um, a lot of um, uh, team members who were not really um, knowledgeable in all of the elements of the history of Wells Fargo, um, which was started in 1852. And I'll tell you a little bit about that later. Uh, but, so what we did was, we actually had a calendar countdown. We did brand, brand booklets which, um, and wallet cards to talk about the vision uh, for uh, the company. And uh, wanting to satisfy customer needs is, is a foundational element of that, uh, which plays right into anyone who's ever worked in branches or stores, as we call them. Um, they, they hold their customers to their heart all the time. Um, and we did also a treasure box. You can see a little strong box. In the strong box, we had fun facts about the company. Um, and we did games throughout the early part of the conversion schedule so that fo the folks, the team members in the stores, had a lot of fun learning about the history of the company that maybe they didn't know. Um, and also, we had customer fun facts that they could share with their customers as part of the opening week. So they were learning about the company, and then, because it was fun, 
they were then sharing it with their customers. So this whole thing around the, um, the employee engagement, team member engagement, is so critical to any success. And, and I think we, we spent a lot of time with this um, and over a, period, a long period of time to get our team members definitely uh, engaged in the process. Um, from an external standpoint, we, uh, Kevin's here with me today. He's um, our corporate communications um, director, um, and we work very closely. So we, we, we really made a concerted effort to make sure that we were out in the media with our story, the stagecoach is coming, um, so that people understood what this stagecoach was all about. Um, and there's just some of them there. We also did a lot of um, center of influence receptions. Uh, when we did the, over the weekend of the sign changes, we, we scheduled those as well as ribbon cutting events. And we made it like a real opening, like uh, you were opening up a de novo location, a new store. Um, and we were changing to Wells Fargo, we were changing to a new brand, but the same people were there, they were excited and willing and engaging in, in welcoming the same customers that they had been serving through, a, through that period of time. Now, from a creative standpoint, <coughs> we, we, we have general market. I'm going to show you some of the commercials and how we stage the commercials. There's uh, four or five commercials. Um, we did them in a specific order. Um, you probably have seen one or more of them, uh, but I want to show you why those specific uh, commercials were chosen and the messaging behind them. I thought that would be interesting for you. Um, and then some activities on diverse segments. We had a whole, we have, we're, uh, our agency is Lippincott, um, and yet we have diverse segment agencies focused just on these segments, so that we are doing things that are um, important to our customer base, which is made up of all these segments. Um, so we have Hispanic, African American, you'll see some Asian, and you'll see some LGBT. Um, we, we looked at all channels. So advertising is a channel. Allegra mentioned experiential. You're going to see a lot of that kind of activity, as well as what we did in store. Because what we did in store, I think, is setting the stage for all the other. We did change um, the look of the stores. Uh, and that facelift, I call it a facelift, um, our team members, it helped that engagement from them. Because it was, you know, it's, it's home for them. Um, and so they felt good about what happened in the store, and they actually had input into that, which is also important. So, Kevin, let's see if we could get some of these commercials. I'm going to show one, and then I'm going to talk about it, because the staging of these commercials, I think, is important to how we wanted to represent the brand introduction over a period of time. Again, remember, we started after the New York and, Converti New York and Connecticut conversion. And, and that is probably, uh, the cycle of that is probably ending right about toward the end of this month. innovative online tools to help you reach your financial goals. More ATMs and branches nationwide and over 150 years of banking experience behind you. But there's one thing that won't change. Those same friendly faces you've come to know and trust will be with you when you want to move forward. Wells Fargo. Together we'll go far. Okay, that's the first of them. And what you see is the store changing. So you're seeing blue and green move to red and yellow. And you're seeing the pulse mark of the Wachovia brand transition into Rains and Roads for the stagecoach. You're also seeing something that is very important. Kevin mentioned it. Um, and Allegra, I think, even referenced it. When you go into a store, what do you want to see? If you, if you have been having good service from Maria, you want to see Maria. And so that speaks to that message that we're not going to change out. Everything's not going to change. We're still going to be focused on service. We still have the same people that are going to be there to serve you. So we move from the changing of the stores to 
the next box. Life is always moving us forward. Leading us down paths we never imagined. For over 150 years, Wells Fargo has been moving forward with our customers, creating financial tools for the twists and turns of life. Now that Wachovia is Wells Fargo in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, we're with you when you're ready to move forward. Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. This spot shows the, the, the migration to moving forward. Okay, you have the same people. We're changing the stores. Now it's all about getting the strength of Wells Fargo. 150 years, you'll see that replayed and replayed and replayed. Getting that strength behind us moving forward. Um, and you'll also notice that, that those are very local shots. There's a spot on the Jersey Shore. There's a spot against the New York skyline. As you see these spots across the East Coast, you're going to see local spots in every market. So it's the marriage of national to local, very local. Okay, let's go to the next one. The thing about Reggie is that he really doesn't like change. Why mess with something that's been working for you? My hair? Same look since 89. It's eighth grade. So when he heard that Wachovia was becoming Wells Fargo, he had some concerns. Why would I want a new name on my bank? I have the same house, car, dog. Wife. But when I told him about Wells Fargo's investments, insurance, and online tools, he felt better. Plus, I assured him I'll still be here. So I'm open to it. Wow. Wachovia is now Wells Fargo, with you when you want a bank that gives you more. Now, this, was, this is actually my favorite spot, because what it is, it's moving you from the change that's happened, the moving forward, but, you know, you have that hesit hesitancy as a customer. Um, you don't like change. But it's a good change, and you still have Maria. Notice Maria's still there. Um, so it's a very interesting, I think, um, and, and really, I think, human um, uh, attitude that we're playing to and putting right out there. And so we're addressing that, and I, I really love that spot for that reason. And then it moves into the final spot, which um, you'll see more of. At Wells Fargo, we love helping business owners move forward. When all you have is an idea, when business is picking up, when business is expanding, we're there for you with solutions ranging from payroll to cash management, all backed by the number one small business lender in the nation. Now that Wachovia is Wells Fargo in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, we're with you when you're ready to move forward. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Now we're into the final spot, and it's very much the value that we have to offer to the customers that we serve. And so it's more product focus, it's more value add, it's more relationship building, but it's, it's out of a series of these spots that I think the real message of the brand comes through. Um, I'll tell you that normally when I've introduced brands before, it's a brand spot on TV. You don't have this change from experience of the human um, of human nature included in it you don't have this change of the stores out there you don't have all of the the brand positioning that you're going to see in those four spots so I really think that um, it's important because it's very different from what I have seen um, creative also includes always the newspaper we did a lot of again National and local, that blend was very important to us. So we, we have, you're going to see us with all in the, the large papers. You're gonna, also going to see us in local papers, um, as well as business journals. And the spots are very focused. Um, they're very um, New Jersey. It'll, it, it really speaks to the local market. And it will do that throughout the East Coast. So you'll see New Jersey. Um, and then, and you'll see actually some of these spots are more brand focused as well, and then position again like the TV spots into the product. Um, let's see. Online takes the same path. These paths are very, regardless of the, the media, the paths are the same. It's all about the change and then the payoff in value and product at the end. 
and you'll always see the blue and the green pulse mark change into the rains and the roads. So, outdoor is a big part of what we did. Um, I know that you've, you've seen that. Um, we had, uh, I would say, a focus on transit, um, train, station do train station domination, both in the general market as well as in some of the, um, the markets where you'll see a South Asian in Metro Park. Um, so the, it, it carries through over general market into diverse segments, depending upon where the train station is. Hoboken, there's a, a very, there's a Hispanic focus, um, very, very definitely woven through those four uh, medias. Um, bus wraps, uh, we have a ferry wrap, and I'm going to show you some of those. Wallscapes in New York, we actually had selected some big wallscape, and I'll show you those. Um, and then the billboard positioning, very strong on the major uh, roads as well as um, uh, we selected them based on some proximity to sports arenas. Uh, we did change the name of the Wachovia Center before this started because it's a big uh, venue and it, is, it does pay off into the brand introduction both in uh, New Jersey, southern New Jersey, and, and also into Pennsylvania, of course. So that's now the Wells Fargo Center as well. And then we did some non-traditional, which um, I like the ferry wraps, but we did, we, we're doing some cinema never did that before um, and we're also doing some phone kiosks and I'd like to show you some of those these are this is in Grand Central Station and you can see the messaging is very much what I talked about it's now we're going places go forward Wachovia is now Wells Fargo we're with you in we use tri-state area in many cases because of the overlapping of the New Jersey New York and Connecticut market um, helping people get to where they need to go and we built on the strong reputation, definitely, and the service uh, of Wachovia, but the rich history of Wells Fargo. So you'll see that. This one is, um, again, these are, there's our fun too. So this one is next to Madison Square Garden. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's our approach to banking. Wachovia is now Wells Fargo. You'll see this one in the fashion district. A new look, just in time for the season. And they're, they're huge. So size matters when you're in, a, in outdoor. Um, this one is uh, as you approach the Lincoln Tunnel. Um, this is Wachovia's now Wells Fargo. Again, tri-state area. This is, um, you may have seen some of the buses. They're wrapped. I like the red. <laughs> um, you'll see the billboards are the white background. Uh, some of them are digital. Um, but I like the, these executions in the red. The bus uh, wraps, uh, you'll see ferry wraps as well in the red. These are some of the, the, the street level media that we use, the phone kiosks, as well as um, some of the bus shelters. And we use those mostly in the metropolitan area, so you'll see them in New York, you'll see them in Newark, you'll see them in Camden, you'll see them in Trenton, that kind of thing. Diverse segments, I, I don't have these spots on the, uh, like I showed you the general market ones, but they're, they're fun, they're very fun. And they, this one is Gramps, I love this one. It talks about mortgage and traditional banking. Um, and then Gramps talks to his young children about, well, what about mobile stuff, you know? <laughs> and so there's a bridge between the history and traditional to the non-traditional. There are a lot of these, um, as well as print, again, very, um, very, very definite to the segment. Um, these are with you when it's a wise move, when vision puts goals in motion, um, and when financial growth puts us ahead. And then there's, um, I, I, I don't know if anybody can read these, but um, Asian print for sure. The graphics are beautiful, um, and the stagecoach is prevalent in all of these arenas. This is a, a this is Hoboken actually, where we do have South Asian, and in the pa it, there's a, a sign on the path, and also in Metro Park. And then we have LGBT. I want to talk before we finish about experiential though, because you know we're we're 
um, we're definitely in love with all of this stuff for sure. Um, we did a lot of community events, um, in, and we did them ahead of the conversion as well as all the way through to today. I mean, Kevin, how many are you going to with our RPs? I mean, it's amazing. They're out there every, every week, every weekend. Um, and and we, we have a stagecoach. We have two places, actually, where the stagecoach is uh, local, one in New Hampshire and one in Virginia. Um, we, we request the stagecoaches. Um, we can request them with horses or without. Um, and we put them in parades, and they carry our folks. Um, and we put them in uh, things like uh, the, uh, the home shows as well as uh, in street festivals. And it is, the reaction to the stagecoach is huge, absolutely huge. Um, and we, we actually um, link, we have a mobile museum uh, that we also can bring in, as well as what we, we have a local community program called Hands-On Banking, where we actually show people, it's, it's very driven toward teaching people um, all about doing uh, their finances. So, and it, it has fun games and things like that, and we do that with the tents. So we link that to the stagecoach any way we can, and our folks locally can requisition for the stagecoach and use it uh, throughout. Uh, we did something special in New York City, um, and I don't know if you know this a little bit about uh, Wells Fargo history and trivia, is we were founded in 1852, um, and our founders were also the founders of American Express, Henry Wells and William Fargo. And so we had our anniversary just recently on March 18th. And uh, we, we linked that anniversary to our brand introduction in this market. And on March 18th, we also linked it to something that I talked about early on, the What to Expect mail. One of the nonprofits that got money as part of our outreach was the USO. And so we presented the USO with the check on March 18th, our anniversary. And uh, part of the things that you might see in New York, and I didn't have any spots for New York. There's just so much to show you that I just would take into tomorrow. So in New York, on the big um, windows, you'll see Hello New York signs. So we made this our Hello New York campaign. And we, on March 18th, in Rockefeller Center, we presented the USO with their check. We had the stagecoach there with the horses. We closed the street from Rockefeller Center to Madison and 55th. Madison and 55th, we have a stagecoach actually there permanently on display. Um, but we actually rode the stagecoach from Rockefeller Center to Madison and 55th. And our team members were on the stagecoach and the USO and the wounded warriors were there. And we gave them their check as well as an extra um, uh, donation from the foundation. So we made this part of our anniversary celebration. Now all the stores in Manhattan, we, anything we do from a marketing standpoint, we engage the team members. In New York City, uh, because we were doing this there, uh, they actually had special signage, which you'll see, and uh, there. And also, uh, they had little fun facts about our anniversary and about the company as well that they gave out to customers and that they actually had some fun games to play among their own teams. Um, I think the stagecoach is there. Is the stagecoach there? Did I not change that? There it is. That's the stagecoach that's on display at Madison 55th. It's huge. It's huge. So in addition to this, to launch our anniversary celebration, we had stagecoach rides in Central Park and South Street, Street, South Street Seaport tongue twister. We had them every weekend for four weekends in a row where kids could just come, sign, you know, stand, uh, get on the stagecoach and take a ride around. Um, we also had uh, complimentary pedicabs. I think Allegra, you use these. We wrap them in red, not green. Um, and uh, we use those pedicabs. We also had street team folks on the streets giving out metro cards to folks have a free ride on us. And if they, they wanted a ride to the train station, they could get in one of the metro, in one of the pedicabs and get a ride to the train station as well. Um, and the street teams 
uh, also had pop-up maps of the city. Um, so we, we gave those out to um, customers and to folks on the street. Um, we also did one other thing in Times Square. Uh, we had a, a, one thing I didn't show is we had a concentrated effort in social media. So Twitter, Facebook, um, and uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, we did a street uh, mob in uh, Times Square where uh, the dancers had the red and green t-shirts and changed them to the red and the yellow. Um, and that, that had, uh, I haven't seen the final numbers on that, but that, those things just fly all across the media. And so we did that as well. And I'll tell you, the team members got such a kick out of that. Because it, it is true, you know, we're, as we go into the social media, you can see the younger folks that are team members saying, hey, they really get it. <laughs> and it's, so it's, it's unusual and it's new and different. And we have a whole group that really focuses on that. So that's kind of the experiential side of what we did. We had the pizza boxes. We love those too. Um, and cups that had, in, especially in New York, we, we used them at the, um, the luncheonettes and, the, and, and folks had their coffee in our red cups. Um, and uh, we also used them in Trenton and in Philadelphia that I know of. So I'm not sure where else, but we did use those two things. So when you think of introducing a brand, as I did four brand introductions ago, I thought about changing signs. And it's a whole lot more than changing signs. Uh, but it's a whole lot more fun than changing signs as well. So I'm open for any questions you guys have. Or Kevin, did I forget anything that you think I could cover with this, with this great group? Yes, no silly question. If the horses aren't pulling the stage coach, what is it, got a little engine in it or? No, the, st the, 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 the Either the stage with or coach, without horses, he said. No, no, no. It's sta it's it's permanent. Permanent. Okay. Yes, permanent. So yes. Obviously, if you're in your parade, yeah. then you have the horses. I've learned all about stagecoaches. <laughs> Actually, there's even a called the Buffalo Bill stagecoach. That's a small one that I used at our kickoff event for our team members, and I had it brought up to Perci uh, to Persephone, to the Sheridan up there. Uh -huh. So there's a little one we could get, and then there's the big one, which is in Madison and 55th, and then there's the one with the horses. And the horses, by the way, are gorgeous. What you know, kind of I, I know they're not Clydesdale, yeah. but they're, they're beautifully kept. I mean, there is a, a team of people um, on, the, on the payroll for Wells Fargo, team members, who actually care for the horses. So Fun job. It's a big <laughs> deal. <laughs> it's a big deal, yes. It's fun. I'm sorry I couldn't do this before and invite you to for a horse uh, Thanks for the carriage ride. Thank you for the presentation, first of all. Uh, okay. just, a, uh, just a question that popped up. Uh, yeah. A lot of what you've shown us today appears to be about a conversion uh, mm -hmm. from one bank to another. I guess what the idea of retaining customers, you know, or making customers feel com comfortable mm -hmm. with the conversion. What is being done or when will it be done that you will start introducing advantages Wells Fargo has to new customers? I didn't see much of that in the presentation. I saw a lot of conversion, but I haven't seen how you awaken non-Wachovia people into the bank. Yeah, and I, I, I will tell you that a lot of the brand introduction was twofold, uh, but uh, I would, uh, we, special attention was to existing customers, because you want to make sure they're happy and cared for, and that's our number one objective, um, particularly with the foundation we have in service. Um, from an acquisition side, you hope your new brand, as you introduce it in the market, will attract new people to you. That they'll say, hey, that, that, that bank is pretty nice. I, I think I kind of like that. I didn't know they were that big. I had no idea they were in business since 1852. Um, so you, know, you hope that that will attract customers. From this point on, there's a lot of work on direct mail and outreach efforts, both in leads that we give to our store team members, to you know, in terms of outreach, and a lot of the community work, where they are themselves the walking brand, and they are um, in the communities and, and getting to know people who they didn't know before, and kind of showing them the value we have to offer. Then the final decision is theirs to come with us or not, but um, that's kind of the approach for the new. I will, uh, your, your observation is right on though. There's a lot of work when you're doing a conversion to make sure you care for your existing customers. 
Very good. I'm interested and I'm a little intrigued to go back to um, the point when you had to develop a strategy or understanding how to win over the Wachovia employees. Mm -hmm. What kind of, of priorities did you set? What kind of research? Something must have come out that were concerns of the employees. How did you identify those concerns and how did you get over those hurdles? Um, we uh, we do have as part of we had as part of Wachovia and we did do have as part of Wells Fargo um, surveying of of team members every year um, and so we get feedback that way um, but I'll tell you that I think the advantage in converting two years after you actually merge is that those team members you have a lot of knowledge that's accumulating. People are getting to know the new company. They're um, opting in or not to a new company. Um, and so you have this uh, recruiting, internal recruiting process going on. And so there's a lot of knowledge from that that really played into how we really put the new brand introduction together. That, and I'll tell you the other thing that um, really played very important is every time we looked at um, something that was presented to us to approve, we put the lens on it. Okay, if I was a Wachovia customer, how would I feel? If I was a Wachovia team member, how would I feel? And you have a lot of legacy Wachovia folks that are still in this market, as well as some legacy Wells Fargo that have joined this market. So there was a nice blend of team members to really pay attention to that. And you know, I, I felt at least um, after 37 years that it was sincere and honest and not fake. And I think a lot of our team members felt that too. So they were willing to say, that one doesn't feel right to me. Uh, can you say it this way? And that will feel better to me. And I've seen spots change as a result of that feedback. Michelle, you were shared a lot about the uh, initial conversion, but can you share a little bit more about what your future marketing plans might be? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> I'm hoping there's a lot of it <laughs> that'll keep me employed. Um, uh, we, ha we have, um, I think, a couple of things. There's a lot of focus on the community. Um, there's a lot of focus on continuing and an understanding that we have to continue to be um, in media. There's a blend, though, <clears throat> of what's done from a corporate standpoint and what we do locally. Um, there's, a, there's direct mail. Um, there's a lot of um, focus on the value that we add to, to a customer. So it's, 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 it's always going to be, how do I say it, steeped in the brand but it's going to be more about what else we can offer. That's what I've seen in the continuation of the, of the marketing activities. And I think it's appropriate. I actually you know, am a proponent of that because I think you can get stuck in one thing and think that you know, that will keep you engaged with a market. And I think you have to continue to show the value you add to a market to keep that market engaged with you. So there's a lot more about the value we add that's coming. We have one in the back. Michelle, uh, Wells Fargo has been famous for its services per household metric. Yeah. Uh, how much of that measurement was included in any of the strategies that you developed? Yeah, it, that's a very good question. Um, because when we joined, as I'm a legacy Wachovia person, as you well know, since I told you my history. Um, so when we joined with Wells Fargo, it was Wachovia was bringing a service culture and a um, service reputation. And Wells Fargo was bringing that cross-sell element that was you know, so, so significant. Um, and as the companies have come together, because it took time, people were anxious on the West Coast to understand the service. People on the East Coast were anxious to understand the cross-sell. And I've already seen the blend taking place. So I will tell you that today, two years into the conversion, we're already C-Lift. 
because we've already been working on it. Um, and so I think the blend of the two has really been, been strong. Um, there's some great things that have come to us from a technology standpoint, sales tracking standpoint, customer household tracking standpoint that came to us as part of the Wells Fargo um, merger that we didn't have before. And so you need to keep track of it. You need to keep it in the forefront of your team members so they know it um, because it's all about their knowledge and, and then their wanting to add that value that produces all those results that you're talking about from a cross-sell standpoint. So I would say it's already happened and, and continues to grow. Both Now the good thing is you can grow both on both sides, on the West Coast and the East Coast. Okay, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Th thank you, Michelle. We hope you enjoyed this presentation from the New Jersey Bank Marketing Association. For more information, visit njbankmarketing.com. We produce this program in the studios of Lubetkin Global Communications in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, on the web at lubetkin.net. This is Steve Lubetkin. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you out there on the net. Take good care.